Hi fellow crafters, today I have another easy technique to share with you, one that is really eye-catching. All you need is an embossing folder, some beautiful designer series paper, and your perennial postage dies. If this is the first time you're visiting my YouTube channel, Hi, I'm Terry from NutsAboutStamping.com. I love sharing techniques and project ideas for rubber stamping, paper crafting, and scrapbooking with you each week. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button and the bell beside it so that you'll be the first to be notified when my next video goes live. Speaking of videos, watch all the way through this video for my bonus tips and design ideas. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator yet, I would love for you to choose me. I will link to my online stores in the description box under this video. Now, let's get going on this super cool technique. I have used the perennial postage dies a lot in the past couple of months. The dies feature postage stamps of all sizes, from background images for card making to multiple smaller images that work as accent pieces for all of your paper crafting projects which is what we're going to be creating today. Now for my designer series paper, I chose the perennial lavender pack. No small wonder why. I absolutely love the colors, the hand painted designs and the floral images. So let's get started on this cool technique. So the first thing you want to do is select six different patterns from the Perennial Lavender Designer Series Paper Pack. And these are the patterns I've chosen. Then what you wanna do is you wanna take the small square die from the die pack, and you want to die cut each one of these squares out using this die. So I'll stop the video, head over to my stamp and cut and emboss machine, and then I'll show you what they look like. And there we go, there are my squares ready for the next step of this card, which is to take a solid corresponding color of cardstock and this perennial postage die and die cut this out next. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now what you want to do is take your six little squares that you've created and you want to lay them out in an eye-pleasing pattern, I guess, or layout on this larger postage die cut that we have created. So what I recommend is because these are gonna to have to be really close together, I would suggest that you lay them out before you start adhering. And you may want to switch up a couple of them just to make it a little bit more eye-pleasing. So I'll figure out which pattern I want to use, and then I'm going to adhere them down using my multi-purpose liquid glue. So I'll show you the final pattern that I've decided on in a second. And here we go, it's coming along nicely. Would you like to see another card idea using the Perennial Lavender Designer Series paper? If you would, then why not watch this video next? The next step in making this card is to create the quilted visual effect. And I'm going to do that using my Candy Weave 3D embossing folder. So I'm going to take this over to my stamp and cut and emboss machine and I will emboss this layer and that will create this stunning visual effect that we're trying to achieve. Now, to create a border around this quilted layer, I have a piece of Lost Lagoon cardstock. It's one of the colors in the pattern, and so I'm going to adhere this next so it looks like this quilt layer has a border around it. Now, my card base is going to be crumb cake, and what I want to do is take one of the phrases from the Notes of Nature stamp set and I've chosen this one because it's a birthday card and I want to ink it up and stamp it down onto this card base using my crumb cake ink. Now what I want to do is take my quilted layer and I want to adhere it down flat onto the card front and then we're going to talk embellishments. What pops to mind right away for using embellishments are these purple fine shimmer gems 
I want to choose embellishments that are really complementary, not really contrasting the quilted effect that I've got on the front of my card. So I'll just choose a couple of these gems that hopefully will blend in a little bit. And there we go. My quilted technique is done and ready to send to somebody special. If you would like a complete listing of the supplies that I used and the measurements for the layers, I will link to my blog article in the description box under this video. You can link over there and you can get all the information you need, including product ordering numbers, in case you want to order the products I use so that you can make this card at home too. I'm Terry. I am nuts about stamping. I'll see you at the next video. Bye for now.